Greetings, prop makers of the world, and welcome to another exciting adventure into the world of prop making. Well, this week is kind of a sci-fi theme. Well, kind of really, eh, it's vague. It's steampunk, sci-fi, medieval torture device, one of the above. Regardless, uh, this is a great prop made out of a concrete form and EVA foam. It's pretty much the exclusivity of the whole thing. It's a really great, oh wait a second, I can't forget the bowls, which for some reason I call a tub in the video. This is a great prop and it's, I really like how this thing turned out and I hope you enjoy it too. It's a very straightforward build uh, with tons of room to adapt and change it to how you want. Uh, anyways, I won't say much more. I'll just leave it be. Enjoy the video. All right, we're going to get right into this thing. So before you, you have what is very preliminary where we're going with this alien pod thing build. Anyways, this is 12 inch contractor um, concrete form. I don't know if you've ever seen this stuff. It's fantastic. I usually use it for pouring concrete in. So, of course, I use them and I find these things fantastic. And of course, I'm going, I know what I'm going to use that for. 12 inches to the, uh, well, this is to the outside because if there's an underline on it it means it's 12 inches to the inside to the outside inside anyways one of those things get the one that you feel like so this is just a dollar store uh plastic jar you can see i've got some cardboard here that i'm just using for spacing things out so you get an idea what the heck's going to go on and there's another one down here now what i'm going to be doing here with this this is just a plastic shoe box you can pretty much buy these anywhere it's kind of a common item and if you can't find this exactly, do something else that's going to be close. So what we're going to be doing with this is this is going to become the window. But it's not going to stick out this far. I'm going to have it stick out maybe that far from the front. And then I'm going to be finishing the sides. I just really like the idea of having a broken surface on this to make it look good. Now, how you get this into place is going to be a bit fun. I'll go over that once I get it and how I actually did it and... It's easier to explain once it's in rather than trying to hold it up like this and go, no, 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 no. anyways. So, I'm going to get into here. Next time you see this, this is going to have a hole cut in this tube. And I'll tell you how you go about making sure it looks good and squares up and all that. Okay, I'll be back. All right, as you can see, I've got the cardboard now cut out and I've got the shoebox box in place. I've deliberately gone out of my way to angle it so it sits out more at the bottom than it does at the top. I just like the way it looks and then it gets away from the symmetrical look. Now, how I did these lines is I took a T-square, a big T-square, and hung it off the edge. So I used the top as my line and I drew, drew down. So once I had that, I could then measure across. Now this is where you got to be a little bit careful because... You're dealing with radiuses, so you just can't measure across because the direction across here is shorter. What I did is I put the box up here, measured it across to see how much space I had. And then what I did is I drew the line here. And when I was in place, I cut back a tiny bit. You can always cut more. You can't put it back. So, you know, if you're not quite sure of how much space you need to get this box to fit in or to get whatever you're using for your glass to fit in, just be very careful that you don't overcut. You can actually see that was my original line that I planned. And then this was the line that I cut. And this fits in beautifully. Friction fits in nicely. Now, in the inside, you can see we've got quite a bit of overhang. Now, you have an option of cutting this off if you want to. Or what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be painting this on the inside. So i got to mask out the, this bottom here. Once this is all masked out... I'm going to be just doing a quick spray paint on the inside of this with probably silver because I'd like it to reflect a bit. And what it does is it's going to make it look like, and it's kind of hard to see on the camera, but because of how it's set up, it's going to make the walls of this tube look like they're two inches thick. It's going to be a great view. And the other thing it's going to do is it's going to give me room to hide lights right here. So you just don't look in and you see the lights there. Everything's about hiding and keeping everything kind of in, in not in the way, but out of the way so you, you don't get that break of, oh, look, there's lights in there. So I'm going to go, I'm going to be masking this out, painting it, 
and then I'm gonna be back to show how I did the lights in here. It's just gonna be literally, they're just gonna be LED Christmas lights. Why? Because I ran out of strip lights and I don't have any on hand right now. So anyways, I'll quit yammering on. I will be back once I have this painted and masked out and I may even do, cause when we're all done, there's more going on this than just what we're seeing here. And when we're actually done, we're going to hot glue this in place so it doesn't move. I'll show you what goes on. Of course, I'll keep you in the loop because that's what I do and I'll talk your ear off doing so. I'll be back. All right, our cylinder has now turned into a green cylinder. And as you can see, I used eighth inch EVA foam and stuck it to the whole cylinder or the whole case as whatever we're gonna call it to get a good, nice paintable surface on it. I didn't want the lines from the spiral showing up. So this is where we are now using this spray adhesive. It's uh, Elmer's because I ran out of my 3M stuff and I can't find it in my local stores. So this works well. The only thing is, is when you put it on, spray the surface first and then spray the back of this uh, foam. Let it sit for about 10, 15 seconds and then stick it together. It works very much like contact cement and it actually turns out pretty brilliant. And then just make sure that you don't uh, stack your seams. And if their seams are open a bit, that's fine. You're gonna see what's gonna happen after here. Once this is all dried, I'll come back and I'll show you what my final trick is. And you're wondering, Sawin, why did you do this all in green? I did this all in green because green is one of the hardest EVA foam colors to use. And since I'm spray painting this thing from top to bottom, there's absolutely no reason to use up a color foam that I don't use very often. So this is where we are. I'm going to come back. I'm going to show you what we're going to do to finish this up to make it into a banded metal look. I'll be back. All right. So we see that we've got now the foam is all glued in place. As you saw before, I meant to mention that this is three inches tall. And now what you do is you will hate me by the time you're finished here, but the effect is good. Remember that. When you make these 8 million dots, say, yes, Sawin, the effect is good. I forgive you for doing a project that has like 6,000 individual dots put on it with a soldering iron. Yes. So, each of these dots, yes, soldering iron. Do it in a well-ventilated area, otherwise it stinks to high heaven. And uh, once you're done here, do these rims here, like the, not these rims, good gosh, these gaps and edges. And what you do is you don't push down with the soldering iron. You just very gently let it float along. What it does is it melts the edge of the foam just that little bit. And you can see it gets it such a neat looking effect. And do that with the whole thing. I apologize. Remember that. Don't, don't, don't say my name in vain. I'll see you in a few. <laughs> right. So here we go with the next part here. This was just cut out. Depending on what shape of this thing that you end up with, you're going to have to make this rim here a different size. And the best way to get the cutout for this is you lay this whole tube down onto a piece of foam and you roll it across while drawing the line. I hope that comes across as describing the way I think it needs to. But all you're doing is you just want to make sure that the foam will fit around here. And you see I chamfered the edge of the foam negative to what I need because I'm actually doing an extra finish in here after the fact. Now, this box, I was going to cover with EVA foam, but I decided it doesn't need it. It's got a really good finish on it. It'll look even better when I get the spray paint on and the extra treatment, which I'll be up after. Now, to hold it all in, all I did is I hot glued the top and the bottom. Hopefully, uh, you can see that. Just gives it a good way to hold in. It's not going to move. You know, it, that is a lot of glue to hold that. If you do end up hitting it or if you're a bit worried, you can run a bead of glue down the inside of here. I might do the same, but anyways, I wanted to bring you to this step so you are not lost. Oh, to help screw, because this is hot glued on, you could contact glue this on. I just always find that with these curves, it's hard to hold. So what I do is there's already going to be rivets here when I'm all done. So all I did is I marked out, you can see the pen there. I marked out where this was going to go then I put the hot glue down, put the foam down so I know what the placement was, and then I just put a screw through each one of these to hold it in place as the glue dries. Technically, they can come out, but I'm leaving them in there to keep it in the same, and you can see on the same side here, it turned out really well. Anyways, I'll be back to discuss the front here, and then we'll be moving on to the top, the bottom, and how to hide a bird without anybody noticing it.
All right, so paint is on. If you thought soldering all those holes was bad, imagine painting each one individually with a paintbrush. If you have spray paint, just do spray paint. I have silver and I needed a base coat and I didn't have any black spray paint left, so I had to go through the mind-numbing experiment of using a paintbrush on every one of these. And heck, I'm gonna revise what I said before. Use black foam for this and save yourself a lot of trouble. Do as I say, not as I do. Anyways, here we go. You can see now that I've got a base coat on this as well. Now, the one thing new that you do not didn't see before is this, the quasi weld, which I think looks so neat in there and adds so much to the look of it. Now, it's really an easy process because all you do is you take some air dry, oh, that sun is bright. You take some air dry clay and you just make like a, a, a snake for it and put it in the edge and then using the back of a pen, you just keep on pushing it along. And what you do is you keep, create these ridges. It's not a perfect look for a weld, but you know what? In terms of here, it's almost, it's as good as you need it to be. Anyway, I'm gonna be building a front face plate, which is pretty straightforward. It's just a piece of EVA foam with the piece cut out. And then I'm gonna start working on the tops here. Well, working on the tops here. I'll be back to discuss those. Those are actually pretty straightforward and this is pretty straightforward, then I'm going to be painting this whole thing with spray paint. I'm just waiting for my paint to dry. You can see it's still, still wet there. Anyways, I'll be back in a bit, guys. All right, so we're back and we are working on, I probably said we're back 15 times. Thinking back, I'm going to see all this in editing going, Sawin, you got to find something else to say when you start the new sequence of the video. It's sounding repetitive. Anyways, so, up here, there's a link to this little thingy. It's just for doing drawing circles. It's a short, it takes like 60 seconds to watch. Anyways, these are 14 inch circles. And then because of what I have, this on the inside, I believe is a 12 inch circle. No, it's 11 and a half because the bowl was not just quite big enough to fit the top of this. Now, what you wanna do is you wanna cut out your circle. I did a second line on the inside just so I can line up the actual bowl when I put it on. And then the other side here, you just want to go through and you want to take this surface off. So when you put the contact cement on, it has something to bond to. Now, what you're going to be putting on is these same EVA foam. Actually, you can cut it out of the same piece that this circle came out of because you're going to have left over. And I just pre-bend it a little bit so it will follow the contour a little bit. So when I go to put it on, it doesn't fight me as much. Anyways, so what you're going to be doing is you're going to be putting one on this side, like a full circle then one on this side. Now what it is is interesting is this allows the top and the bottom to friction fit onto the, the, the tub. So, or the tub, but the, the, the cylinder. So once you've got these on, you don't need anything else to attach the top and the bottoms because once this goes on, it really slides on tightly. I'll show you here what's going on. So here is the finished version where everything's been contact cemented on and finished. You can see I've put some more of these gems on. And I'm putting this to the inside so I don't see this texture, but I really liked how this texture looked on the outside of the top. So I kept it. I didn't want to actually sand that down. I like the way it looks in terms of the metal. And now just one more thing to grab out of the way. That is going to be glued down quite quickly here actually. And this becomes the top. I'm still thinking about putting in one more circle on the top here just to finish this off because I don't want this all to be clear. and. Then I can do a few more bolts if I want to, you know. But anyways, this is where we are. You have to build. I'm going to do the good old Lego thing where you go through all the instructions at the end. It says times two down here. And you're like, oh, come on. You could have warned me at the beginning. You need to build two of these, top and bottom. Um, the bottom one, you won't be putting in any more foam on the top here because you want a nice hard surface for this to sit onto. And I'm just going to be hot gluing this, this tub on. I'm going to see if it works been racking my brain uh, while I was working on this thinking if that's going to be enough. I guess we're going to find out in the worst possible way. No, actually, since this is all on the surface, if it doesn't work out, I'll let you know and I'll come up with something else and maybe the next time you see it, it'll be completely different. Anyways, you've got some options here. I'm going to be spray painting this whole thing the same color as the rest of the tube. But if you want to, you can mask parts of this out so you can have light shine through from the inside, like do runes or something. Lots of options when you got this plastic bowl. And these were just picked up at the dollar store. 
in the kitchen department, you know, because me and dollar stores, I love the things. So I'll be back. I'll quit yammering. And um, actually, the next time you see this, it will most likely be completely um, painted and ready to go. I'll start going on to final assembly. Anyways, I'll be back. All right. We are now at the point where we're finally assembled here. So you can see I went through and on each of these, I just hit these with the Dremel and you can see the layer of hot glue here to hold this all together. On the bottom, I did a little bit more hot glue because we have the weight down. In reality, the difference between the point where the glue sits and the area that the tube comes to is about a quarter of an inch. Even with weight, it's not gonna sag the, the EVA foam. Now down here, same thing, you know, everything, this was a tough friction fit up here was easier. This one down here is a little bit harder. Um, when you go to build these, friction fit the top one before you put the top bottom ring on because it'll stretch it a little bit and get it all into place. So this is literally the end of the main assembly. I'm gonna go now and I'm going to be uh, doing the painting. So I'll be back after that and I will talk about the final piece, which is the front palette pane here, but I'll be doing that after because I've got to mask this out and I don't want to have to mask around my front paint. We'll do that very final, and I'll be back, guys. Everything is painted. We are good. And you see here that I just built the frame, which you can do however you want. It's just set up to go into the, just on the front of the shoe box. Once again, everything here changes depends on what things you can get. This has got the shoe box on it, and it works out pretty well. Now, all I did is I put some more of the rivets on the front, and I did a bit of a sharpened edge here because I wanted to make it look a little bit rough. Now, this whole top is all friction fit as I spoke before. Really, well, friction fit. Holy man, it's hard to do on the camera. There we go. Okay, so I'm just gonna show you what I did in here. Now here, I just put in a single piece of wood with two screws through it to support the light. Now this is just one of the, you know, the glimmer lights, I don't know what the heck they're called, uh, the, the kaleidoscope lights. It works out really well because it fits in here really, really slick. And then I just, at the back here, at the very bottom, I cut a tiny little tab in the back so you could uh, run the cord through. Gets it out of the way and makes it work really well. And of course, you can change out whatever you want on the inside. Oh, that's a horrible angle there. You can change out whatever you want on the inside and everything just goes back together really easy. That's gonna have to go on with. That just reminded me, hear that noise? That was a gem dropping. For some reason, the gems don't like sticking to this texture. So if you're gonna use the gems, glue them on. I have to go back and hot glue them all on so it's not a big issue. But I wanted to bring you to this point because the next step for me is I'm gonna go age all this. I'll go over the aging of course when I'm all done just so you know what the heck I did. But as it stands here, this is where we are and where we're going. I'm going to go do the aging on it. I'll describe what I did when I'm all done. But anyways, I'll be back again because that's what I say. I'll be back like 15,000 times. What am I, the Terminator? The weathering is finished. The prop is finished. So you can see overall everything that I did here. The main part of this whole weathering was I did a black wash on these joints. Put a bit black here. If you look closely, you can probably see some drip marks, which is fine. I really like the way that this made it. And I actually went through and I think I did like three different layers of a wash with black to get this effect. Don't be afraid to, you know, put a wash on, wipe it off, put it on, wipe it off. It makes a big difference on the overall aging and patina of the actual item. I did the whole thing with a black wash. You can see it all over the place here where the black has settled down around the the actual nuts and the rivets. It looks really nice. After that, I took some burnt umber and I just dirtied it up a little bit more by running a brush in a dry brush fashion over this. And then around the rivets, I put a little bit on each one down here. Let's see if I can get the angle right here, right here. A little bit of brown put around here and a few corners add it to add character you know it doesn't have to be perfect you can actually see really now where all that brown comes in but regardless and the only other thing that i did is i taped that cord down the side so you can't see it at the back anyways this thing is done 
I hope you enjoyed the trip into the realm of sci-fi slash steampunk slash medieval torture device. No, I don't think that's what that is. It was fun. I like how this thing turned out. Um, if you liked it, please hit that like button down below. If you really liked it, you can hit the subscribe button. Um, but regardless, I'll be back next week for the next one. Uh, or actually what I may do for the next one is I may do like an extra credit because there's more stuff I would like to do to this, but I don't want to make it so complicated that it puts people outside the range of doing it. I've got some stuff I could add to it, but it's more specialty stuff and I can't just say is a general process. Yes, just go grab this stuff because let's be honest, it's... What I'll be doing next would be ex more expensive and more specialized. So I figured I'd split it out into its own video. I might still do a prop video. We'll see. But the one thing you can guarantee you're going to get is me talking a lot. <laughs> Thanks so much for watching, everybody. And I will catch you again next week. <laughs>